Lincoln bomber was a development of the Avro Lancaster bomber. The Royal Air Force realised it lacked a bomber with enough range to be effectively utilised in the Pacific and thus issued specification B-1443 in 1943. In response to this, Avro submitted an updated version of the Lancaster that included extending the rear fuselage, increasing the wingspan, upgrading the armament and was powered by the Merlin 85 engine. It was originally designated Lancaster Mark IV, but due to the changes being made, it was decided to give it a completely new designation. The prototype of the Lincoln took to the skies for the first time during early June 1944. However, it wouldn't be until August the following year that it entered service, as it was decided to prioritise continuing the production of the Lancaster. The Lincoln would come too late to see action in the Second World War, although it saw combat service in Malaya and Kenya during the 1950s. The Lincoln remained in service with the RAF until the early 1960s, with the last being utilised for radar development trials in 1963. Additionally, 40 were exported to Argentina, where they remained in service until 1967. Over 550 Lincolns were built in the UK, a single one in Canada and 73 in Australia. The Australian story begins in early 1943, when the Australian government sent a mission overseas to the United States and the United Kingdom to search for a new fighter and bomber for Australia to produce. Led by the Department of Aircraft Production, DAP, Secretary Daniel McVeigh, the mission included CAC's General Manager Lawrence Wackett and RAAF representatives. After touring factories in both the UK and the United States, the mission reached the decision to recommend for production in Australia the P-51 Mustang and the Lancaster Mark III. In May of 1943, Lancaster ED-930 was sent out from England to Australia as a pattern aircraft, and in November of that year, the War Cabinet approved the manufacturing of 50 Lancasters to be undertaken by the Beaufort Division of DAP. In February 1944, it was decided that DAP would produce the Lincoln instead of the Lancaster, and thus specification number 344 was written up to cover the new aircraft. Australian Lincolns would be given the designation Lincoln Mark 30, and would feature Merlin 85B engines and defensive armament that included a Bolton Paul Type F Mark I remote control turret in the nose. The mid upper turret would be a Bristol Type 17 Mark I housing two 20mm Hispano Mark V cannons. The rear of the aircraft would feature a Bolton Paul Type D Mark I turret with two 0.50 Brownings. This would be the same defensive armament seen on the Lincoln B2 in Britain. The Lincoln program would be further amended in July 1945 to the manufacturing of 61 Lincoln bombers and 12 of the new Avro Tudor airliners. The Avro Tudor was a pressurised airliner with the same wings and engines as the Lincoln, and while a wooden mock-up was built in 1948, it was ultimately dropped and the order amended to 73 Lincolns. Following the end of the Second World War, the Department of Aircraft Production was rebranded as the Government Aircraft Factories, GAF. The first five examples built by GAF were for imported British parts, and on the 12th of March 1946, the first Lincoln assembled by GAF took to the skies for the first time. The first Lincoln to be produced from Australian parts was handed over to the RAAF in November. The first 25 models produced were all designated Mark 30s. The remaining 48 Lincolns would receive the designation Mark 30A and introduce greater amounts of structural strengthening leading to an increase in permitted takeoff weight. The Merlin 85Bs fitted to the Lincolns would prove quite troublesome and many had to be withdrawn from service to be modified. As a result, a shortage of Merlin 85Bs ensued and was at one point so critical that there wasn't enough Merlin 85 to continue normal operational service of the Lincoln. However, the RAAF still had many Merlin 66 engines on hand, as these had powered over half of the 410 Spitfire Mark 8s that had been brought into the country during the Second World War. Thus, as a temporary solution, Merlin 66 engines were fitted into the outboard positions, while the inboard positions still contained the Merlin 85Bs. The long-term solution came in the form of the Merlin 102 that was being manufactured by CAC which proved to be more reliable while also improving fuel economy.
Testing of the Merlin 102 and the Lincoln began in August 1949. The last batch of 12 Lincolns were delivered to the RAAF between December 1952 and September 1953. From February 1948, the Lincoln would go into service with numbers 1, 2 and 6 squadrons of the Royal Australian Air Force, forming number 82 wing. They were based at Amberley, Queensland. In 1949, 14 Lincolns would be converted to long-range navigation configurations in order for number 82 wing to partake in the special exercise Operation Cumulative. Modifications to these aircraft included the addition of improved navigational aids and equipment, autopilot equipment, the addition of an eighth crewman, and a recorder that would monitor the positions and performance of the aircraft every minute. From October 1949 to February 1950, these specially converted Lincolns took part in the RAF RAAF Joint Exercise Operation Cumulative. The crews would take off from Amberley and fly some 12 hour routes, eventually landing at Darwin or Kalgoorlie. These flights were to simulate strike missions from England into Russia and to assess long range navigating and bombing capabilities in blind conditions. This data would be utilised by the RAF to help plan for the strategic bomber force. In July 1950, in response to the British request for assistance in the Malayan emergency, No. 1 Squadron was deployed to Singapore. Over the next eight years, Lincoln's and No. 1 Squadron will form an essential part of the aerial campaign in Malaya, undertaking nearly 4,000 sorties and dropping around 15,000 tonnes of bombs on communist targets. This made up 85% of bombs dropped during the campaign. While not being deployed into active combat, both No. 2 and 6 squadrons were utilised in the atomic trials that the British undertook in Western and Central Australia. The first test occurred during October 1952 in Western Australia, while the second occurred in October 1953 in South Australia. Lincolns from No. 10 squadron also took part in the first test in Western Australia. During these tests, crews undertook roles including air communications, meteorological reports, and atomic cloud sampling. These atomic cloud sampling missions are quite controversial as the crews had to fly through the atomic cloud collecting radiation dust with minimal protective gear. For ground crews it was also particularly dangerous as they had no protective gear and the aircraft were not subjected to any decontamination procedures. Number 2 and 6 Squadron gave up their Lincolns for the new jet powered Canberra bombers during December 1953 while No. 1 Squadron waited to transfer to the Canberra until their return to Australia from Singapore in 1958. Development of the Lincoln continued. In August of 1949, it had been proposed to modify the Lincoln into an anti-shipping, anti-submarine maritime reconnaissance aircraft. Over the next few years, various solutions were put forward and much discussions took place, and it wasn't until 1952 that the prototype of this new version of the Lincoln appeared. Designated Lincoln General Reconnaissance GR Mark 31 and known as the Long-Nosed Lincoln, it featured a nose that had been extended by some 6.5 feet. This allowed for the addition of three Sonoboy operators and their equipment, while not hurting the performance of the aircraft. GR Mark 31s also had their bomb bay modified to carry torpedoes and a lifeboat if needed, and the H-2S radar fitted to the Lincoln was upgraded to ASV Mark 7 radar. Deliveries of the GR Mark 31 began in 1955 when on the 8th of March No. 10 Squadron based at Tanville took their first delivery of the type. The final 12 Lincolns off the production line were finished as GR Mark 31s and some Mark 30s were converted to GR Mark 31 configuration. In all, 20 GR Mark 31s were produced. The final variant of the GAF Lincoln was the MR Mark 31 which was a variation of the GR Mark 31, with all 10 MR Mark 31s being converted GR Mark 31s. The MR Mark 31 differed from the GR version by having one of the Sonoboy stations removed, as well as updated radar and a low level bomb site. The first MR Mark 31 was delivered to Number 10 Squadron in March of 1955. In 1957, they were further modified with the removal of the mid upper turret and this was followed two years later with the removal of the .5 Brownings from the nose turret. Number 10 Squadron would fly the Lincoln into the early 60s 
when in June 1961, due to advanced corrosion being found in the wing spars, all remaining Lincolns in service were grounded permanently. Number 10 Squadron would then convert to the Lockheed P-2V-7 Neptune the following year. The only other squadron to see service with the Lincoln was Number 11 Squadron based at Pierce, Western Australia. They very briefly flew Lincoln Mark 30s between late 1950 and mid-1951 while they awaited the arrival of the P-2V-5 Neptune. When production ended in 1953, Australia had produced 73 Lincolns. CAC would produce 108 Merlin 102 engines. The Lincoln proved to be quite a versatile bomber and would be a key aircraft for the Commonwealth in Malaya. Following service, all Lincolns were disposed of and thus today there is no surviving example of a JAF Lincoln. However, there is a no section of a JAF Lincoln in the care of the Camden Museum of Aviation and the Moorabbin Air Museum does have the remains of an Avro B-2 Lincoln which it aims at one day restoring and displaying as an RAAF JAF Lincoln. Around the world there are only three other examples of the Avro Lincoln, two in Argentina and one in the United Kingdom. The JAF Lincoln stands as the largest aircraft ever produced by Australia.